Today we're talking to Isatana, ASX code ICE, and they have a market cap of around 10 million. Isatana is a global SaaS software company providing video analytics technology designed to identify abnormal events and unexpected behavior in real time for large scale surveillance networks. The technology is used everywhere from shopping centers to casinos to universities. We're speaking today with non-executive chair, Matt McFarlane. Matt, welcome back to the network. Thanks, great to be here, Paul. Now, Matt, let's just start. Uh, you just recently transitioned from uh, the CEO role. So tell us you know, a bit more about you know, the change in roles. What brought that about? Sure. So it was at the start of this month, and I've handed over to the person who was my chief operating officer, so from within the organization, Kevin Brown. Uh, Kevin was formerly at Virtual Gaming Worlds and drove that business uh, revenue dramatically upwards as the chief operating officer there. Um, we've been working on the transition for a long time, and I've decided to stick around in the chair role uh, to do investor relations things and because, you know, Isotana is still very close to my heart and I see a great potential for the business. So I'm very keen to continue to be involved, just not quite as involved as I was in the past. Got gotcha. you. So Matt, let's start. Um, there continues to still be a lot of buzz around uh, AI, artificial intelligence, including machine generated images and programs like ChatGPT. I was just wondering if you could talk through your own self-learning AI solution and how it's developed and how it works. Sure. So we've um, just in the last three or four months actually completed the development of our product to a commercial level uh, where it is being re-released as a completely new platform uh, dealing with exactly the challenges you talked about in the introduction, picking up things in real time for uh, large scale surveillance networks. Uh, but we're doing it on a thoroughly new platform. And that new platform utilizes the latest in AI technology. We use a system called YOLO, which stands for You Only Look Once. It's a, a licensable but open source uh, product that helps us identify people and vehicles and other interesting events that take place. And then we combine that with our own AI solutions to uh, map out scenarios, understand events, and compare them in real time to what we're expecting to see in front of each individual camera. So our systems are um, AI generated, we're training them with neural networks, we're learning to find things like fire and smoke or people falling over in front of uh, cameras, which is particularly useful to, for surveillance networks. Uh, at the same time, we're utilizing all the AI developments that are happening out there in the world. So ChatGPT has transformed uh, many people's jobs, yours in particular, I'm sure. Um, but, but also in our, in our own operations, I reckon that our development team has probably lifted their productivity by about 30% just from the types of tools that are now available uh, in the AI world. Things like DALI, which allows you to create images, helps us to train neural networks. We can create a thousand images of fires in a shopping mall if we want to in a matter of minutes. In the old days, it would take you days and days to trawl through YouTube videos and other images uh, on the internet to try and get your neural network trained. And so for Isotana, it's been really transformative the last six or nine months of AI development. And it's also been the same for our customers who are showing a lot more interest in our product. Fantastic. So uh, let's go on to the business now. Uh, your, your recurring revenue has been increasing. What sort of growth to AIR can we expect to see going forward? So yeah, look, we've been increasing, but only very gradually because we've been stuck in the old world of our previous product, which is literal, was literally 10 years old. Um, the new product is explainable. It's accessible through a browser. It's integrated with ChatGPT. Um, uh, you know, it's it's really transformed the engagement levels that we have with our prospects and with our existing customers. So a lot of our existing customers, we're currently negotiating and working with them to migrate across to the new product. Uh, and we're seeing expansion opportunities on the back of that. So um, our revenue growth has been quite muted the last couple of years, but a big focus for the next six to 12 months is absolutely on revenue growth. So we're now in a position where the product is so attractive and interesting that we can bring in really good salespeople. Honestly, six months ago, I had a hard time attracting a salesperson because I had a tired old product. But now I've got a super exciting new product and they can see the potential of that. And we're now able to hire sales guys who are literally going to take a sales cut because they know that the commission they're going to earn on selling this is going to be much higher. So um, the, the business is going to go through some incredible revenue growth, I think, in the next couple of years. Uh, in terms of numbers, we haven't released anything, but certainly in terms of budget, I'm certainly aiming towards, you know, a good SaaS company should be growing 40% every year, right? And so that's our sort of threshold that we're aiming for. And we did achieve that in the past few years, but it slowed down a bit in the last 12 months. What sort of a AIR retention levels is the business kind of seeing? So last year, we were just slightly under 100% in terms of a revenue 
uh, ARR because we lost a couple of larger customers early in the year when our new product wasn't ready and we were at the tail end of our old product, which was a bit disappointing. Uh, however, um, historically, we have pretty consistently knocked above 100% in terms of revenue retention. So that's, you know, you make up more from growth of a customer than you do from losing customers. And that's where we're aiming for going forward. And we certainly expect that in the next 12 months. And uh, what area is driving the most growth in the business? Uh, look, the, I think the most interesting sector for us is in guarding services. The reason why guarding services is interesting for us is a single guarding services company might have 20 or 30 different clients that it can actively monitor remotely. So you might have you know, one guarding services business that looks after 20 schools and each school has 50 to 100 cameras and they can monitor all of those schools at night without having to send a guard out to them you know, through the course of the evening. They can save a fortune on monitoring those operations and we get a beautiful multiplier in terms of the number of uh, cameras we can support. So that's a, a really interesting growth area for us, but we've, you know, we've recently pivoted into lots of other sectors. And anyone who's got a control room where there's lots of cameras coming into that control room is an interesting target for us. And the, uh, the company recently announced a, a new contract with the Sydney Opera House, yep. just behind you by the way. Yeah. How important a win was this and how will it impact revenues? Look, there were, there were two things that were really satisfying about uh, Sid, the Sydney Opera House win. One was that it was a very competitive tender process. So we were up against some of our main global competitors in this space. So it was very pleasing to get through that and end up with a commercial relationship uh, with the Sydney Opera House. Uh, the second is that it's an industry segment we haven't dealt with in the past. So a cultural and event centre has traditionally not been a place that we've been able to sell into particularly well. And in the enterprise software game, it's very important to have reference site. So you can't get more iconic than the Sydney Opera House. We are, of course, extremely pleased to get them. Commercially, it's quite a small contract to start with, and we certainly hope to grow it by proving ourselves uh, on the site. And look, clearly you're focusing on, on, on clients within in Australia, but geographically outside of Australia, where do you see the real sort of target markets uh, that you want to get into and uh, can see good revenue grow from? Yeah, so um, look, I think uh, we, we have a strong focus in Australia to start with for revenue growth. We want to create a strong franchise model for how we get into the market with this new product, prove how it can, and it can step up the revenues of the parties that we sell through. Uh, but we see Singapore, Japan and the Middle East as core markets in the next 12 months. Beyond that, the US and North American market is going to be really interesting because we want to go there with our franchise model in hand and go to the security integrator resellers and help them to sell a product that should fly off the shelves. Fantastic. And uh, what additional opportunities can you see for the, te for the technology going forward? Look, a lot, of our, um, uh, a lot of our sales to date have been to shopping mall uh, customers. And shopping mall customers are really interested in getting some marketing and, and, and related information to help their lease negotiations, to understand when there are uh, uh, spikes in traffic and that sort of thing. And out of the box, we get people counting. Uh, and we also get heat maps that we can pretty easily create for these uh, customers. So adding features like that to our product is a, is a core focus. Uh, however, there's a lot more opportunities to also enhance the security offering. So looking at things like fight detection and, and picking up specific events in a targeted manner, as we do with our current fire detection system where we trained a neural network to find fire in front of any camera, uh, that's that's interesting for us. And this is very much driven, we're very much a customer-driven development organisation. So as we sell to customers, we listen closely to their needs and we develop accordingly. With the new product, we are releasing a new release every six weeks. With the old product, you'd be lucky to see a new release every year. So the accelerated development has made a dramatic difference to our customers and their engagement with us. And is there an opportunity, are you speaking to people like the police force, the fire service, the armed forces? Are they conversations that you're having? Is, is there potential? There is potential. Um, the, it depends on the willingness of the party to go into a real-time response environment. So the police spend most of their time trolling through other people's footage historically after an event's happened and so they have a strong use case for um, forensic analysis of historical footage because they don't have a lot of actively monitored sites. But there are some opportunities and you know with the advent of AI and people realizing what can be done with it there's a lot more companies that are open-minded to uh, real-time response and we think that we're starting with the commercial sector uh, but the government and the you know public services sector is certainly an area we want to move into. Matt McFarlane, really th appreciate the update. Clearly a very interesting six months you know, for ICETAR. We're watching very closely. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me along. Thank you.